going on, people? This is your old pal, CHH. Welcome, guys. Come on in. Today, we've got a sleeper 4K release this year. I'm going to try to get this one out as soon as I can. Um, if I haven't done a tour on my new video shelves, movie shelves, it'll come. Hopefully, it's already out by now. But look, physical media is... It's not my job, but it's my passion. So when I got new releases that come out, I want to talk about them as soon as I can, especially if it's something I think people haven't seen before and or if it's limited. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. Uh, today's review is going to be about George A. Romero's Bruiser on 4K. So right away, I'm going to tell you it's completely region-free, people. I don't care if you live in the Czech Republic. I don't care if you live in Iceland. I don't care if you live in Alabama. I don't care if you live in Nebraska, Montana, which is a place I forget exists because that's the first time I've said Montana in probably seven years. It doesn't matter because 4K as a format, people, it's region free, right? Now, I'm going to do this review a little bit unorthodox. I just want you to have a seat and let me talk to you. I'm not going to make this this overly um, edited video about this. Because this is not what I want to get across with this review. I don't want to bedazzle you with fast cuts, images from the movie, a, bu a bunch of images from the movies. I need to just talk to you as an au my audience. Pretend you and me are just having a conversation and you're like, did you pick up anything cool? We're at the bar and we're sitting down. That's the way I want to attack this review because I don't want to spoil much about this movie. I'm going to give you a little bit of the synopsis about it. But I want to talk about this because this is a sleeper movie. And I really like this movie. So... Bruiser is a George Romero film from 2000, and I'm going to pretend you've got a denim jacket on with patches on it, and I'm going to sell you on Bruiser right now. The Michael Graves era of the Misfits perform live in Bruiser in two separate occasions in a big scene. They have a performance song going on where, you know, kind of like in Hellraiser 3, and then some havoc ensues, and then we're back to seeing... The Misfits perform again. The names of the songs off of Famous Monsters are slipping me. I'm pretty sure both of the songs are off of Famous Monsters. Um, if not, one of them's on um, the 97 record. But I know one of them was off of Famous Monsters as far as I can remember. That alone makes this such a unique release. Because you've got a George Romero film from the year 2000, which was filmed basically around 99, where you've got The Misfits performing. Jerry only... You know, Michael Graves, just so cool. Dan, uh, not Danzig, uh, Doyle, Von Frankenstein. And it's so cool. Much less in 4K, okay? So that I want to start, say, off right from the beginning. So here's the thing about Bruiser, okay? Bruiser is a movie that's in George's catalog that, look, the reality is not a lot of people talk or have seen about this movie. Now, I'm not going to come here and criticize you if you're watching this and make it sound like I'm better because I've, I know about Bruiser and I've seen Bruiser. Let me, be, let me be totally honest with you. George is my favorite director. I have seen, I think, at this point, probably 85 to 90% of what George has done. There's probably still a few things that I, I need to go see if I haven't. Um, I remember when Amusement came out, the lost George Merrill film. I bought the movie from uh, that Blu-ray that came out for that, and I loved it. It's a weird movie. It'll kind of trip you out mentally. I recommend that. Bruiser was a movie I never saw until really a few years ago, and I'll give credit. It just slipped by me. I never heard of it. I never saw a Blu-ray or DVD for it, ever. Pizzow did a patron request review for it, I think. It might have even been from my pal Steak Sauce that asked them to do it. And I just remember saying to myself, what, what is that? I remember looking at the cover art of the poster for it, and it's like this face where half of it is like nothing. L look, this is the guy. And I remember saying to myself, what the hell is Bruiser, man? Like, what is that? And as he was describing this movie, and I, I was like, why, why does this sound like something I would probably love? Well, I decided to watch Bruiser. Here's what Bruiser is about, okay? And I'm going to talk to you guys about this release and why I'm kind of amped up to talk to you about it because it is it is limited and I don't know how Indicator works their business model so that's why I'm gonna I, I seem a little you know a little amped up about this Bruiser is about this guy you've got this guy he's got a good job at a magazine company called Bruiser and I think he's got stocks and he's part of it he's part of the company and he just seems like he has no identity people around him walk over him his friends just kind of use him his wife treats him like absolute trash she literally cheats in front of him 
His boss is the biggest POS in the world that runs the magazine. He's that he's that kind of rebellious, kind of artsy weirdo that looks like he's always on drugs but thinks he's better than everybody. Clinical narcissist. And he is just a jerk to everybody. And his boss and his wife have an affair, basically right in front of him. She says, you're such a loser. You're a nothing. You don't have a backbone. You don't have a spine. You don't even try to stop the guy from trying to, you know, grab me and make out with me. You just kind of sit there like, I hate you. you you're a worthless sack of crap and he this poor guy is just dead on the inside he's not making as much money as he should with the way the co- the company's going so everything just seems off with this guy well he's kind of close with the owner of the magazine's company's wife they're kind of friendly okay but him being the kind of guy he is he's very respectful he's not the kind of guy to cheat well she has this kind of hobby of making face molds of people so just like we look about like when we're watching horror movies but behind the scenes stuff where we see or in, in the movie max scene they do the plaster stuff over their face they wait for it to dry then you get a cast of their face she does this to him at the party and you don't really think much of it he does he does this thing and he looks at it and she's like hey go put your mask out in the yard blah 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 i, I kind of do this for fun it's one of my hobbies i like it well, that night after the party, after the wife has cheated on him, probably for the fifth or sixth time, and that's probably a conservative number, mind you, he decides like he's had enough. The next morning he wakes up, the mask that she was, she was made of his face, it's on him. And if you've seen the movie Clown, the Eli Roth Presents movie, where he puts the clown costume on and he can't get it off, well, this is kind of similar. Although he, we don't get a scene of him putting this mask on. We don't get a scene of the mask becoming a part of him. It just does. And it almost flips this, or it does, it flips this switch in him. He's this mask killer that is getting revenge on everybody. Bruiser is a revenge movie. Bruiser is also the name of the magazine. So the title is kind of like this. I don't know if you call it a double entendre title. I don't know, I don't know if that's the right phrasing. But before I saw this, I thought Bruiser was going to be about this guy who's just bruising people. He's a bruiser, right? But, it, you know, the name of the movie really comes from the name of the magazine. And then it becomes this bloodthirsty revenge movie that is extremely stylistic, but has that 2000 flair that you would see from a lot of movies during that time, of course. But it's still seeded throughout with that George Romero style that he has. And the thing about George's movies is I wish I could really describe the flow of a George Romero movie. I can do that for John Carpenter, but I can't do that for George. And I feel bad that I can't do that. But the fact of the matter is, I just know a George film when I'm watching it. And I'm sure you probably do as well. So, that's the movie. I love it. You're going to see some familiar faces like Tom Atkins in here, which is really cool. And there's a few other players in here that I recognize, especially like The Boss, which I believe his name is Milo. And, um... I've seen him from other stuff. I don't remember the actors' names, but if you're a millennial, you'll probably recognize some of these people. Bruiser is a deep cut. It is a horror fans movie, but it's a good movie. I don't look at Bruiser as a George Romero film that is like, ah, it's not really good, but it's still a George film. No, it's pretty damn good because it's a George Romero film, right? And the thing about Bruiser is, watching the special features of this, I found out that Bruiser, it's a good-looking movie. It's a great-looking 4K, but we'll talk about that in a second. Bruiser is a movie that had a little bit of studio interference, which George wasn't used to, but the reality was the people that were giving George money, the money money producers, as it were, they had thoughts and ideas. So Bruiser kind of, I say kind of staves a little bit more mainstream than getting darker and grosser than it probably could have with the way George might operate, but... It's not something you really will notice until you learn about that, but I'm kind of spoiling that for you right now, but it's not going to affect your enjoyment of the film, in my opinion. So what I'm getting at is, when people mention Bruiser, I always want to give them a virtual high five or dap them up, because it's a George Romero film that, above all else, you should see from George's catalog. And I think it's a sleeper from George. Like, I prefer Bruiser over... Some of George's movies, I prefer Bruiser over, let's say, The Crazies or Season of the Witch. Uh, I just do. Like, Bruiser is intensely 1999-2000-ish. But if you like that era, 
that's another thing you're going to dig about this. So, with all that being said, guys, I love Bruiser. I, I'd give it a, it's a one thumb up movie for sure, but my heart wants to give it to. I just really like it. And there's some really cool revenge scenes, if you will. So, this is the release, guys. Uh, this is from a company called Indicator. Now, I have a few Indicator titles, but the reality is, the majority of Indicator titles I have, they're, they're really more so uh, old movies. Like, I don't know a whole lot about the label, but this is the 4K release. Every All the special features are on the 4K disc, uh, so like I said, it's completely region-free, and um, it's limited. I've got number 3,459 out of 5,000, and the reason I want to talk about this as, as quick as I can is because... I don't know if this means that there's going to be a standard release of Bruiser from them or not. So I want people that see this now and have an interest of what I'm talking about. Maybe you are a George Romero fan. You've seen all his classics. And you're like, dude, I, I, want to, I want to get that. That's a George Romero film. I want you to get this. I got this. You can get this from the, from the Diabolics and all those places, right? And so pick that up if you're interested. So... There's this. There's a. There's a. Uh, there's five thousand of the 4K release. I want to say there's twenty five hundred of the Blu-ray release. And if you're region free, that's not a problem. But obviously, if you're not, you're gonna want to get the 4K because obviously 4K is a region free format. So this comes off, and this is actually a really nice hard shell box on here. Uh, you've got the image of our main character, the Bruiser, on here, which looks really cool. Um, the back shows all the special features, and when it comes to special features. The big things you're going to get is audio commentaries with George. There's an audio commentary with the star. Uh, there is this really long... I'll show the list of them right now. There's this really long um, interview with George Romero that was um, put on here, and it's got a really big disclaimer saying, listen, we, we this is just for your entertainment. We don't want you... Basically, they're saying, we don't want you sharing this around on the Internet. This needs to stay on this Blu-ray. It's like a very long interview going over George's career. The downside of that, though, I will say, the downside of that special feature is it's a black screen. There's no video. So it's just be something you would listen to, which is kind of a bummer because if it was video, you're more enticed to want to sit down and watch it. But the reality is it's just audio. I listened to the last couple chapters of it where he covers movies like this because I know everything about Night of the Living Dead, for God's sakes. There you go. There is that feature. But the cool feature is with the star on here. He does a really cool interview where you will learn about the making of Bruiser. He talks about how he got the job uh, working with George, the stuff George dealt with while making this film. And that's where the money's at in terms of the features. So it was a good interview with him. And there's a few other things you'll see. Uh, there's the soundtrack demos and things like that, promotional materials. So that's what the release entails. Um, I'm not in love with this, uh, but I, I do like it when they're in these protective cases, especially when they're packaged like this. So when you take this out, uh, the movie comes in a one of these. I don't really know which, how, do you, how you describe these, the flaps. There it is in there. Like I said, it's one disc. All the special features are on the 4K disc with the movie. Uh, the movie looked great. I would give the 4K a strong 8.5 out of 10. It's not the best 4K I've ever seen. But then again, this was a movie in 2000. Movies weren't looking super glamorous. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's a George film that has a... Not a dimness in terms of the actual picture, but a dimness in terms of the tone, right? And I think that's reflective in the way the movie... I guess kind of looks, but a lot of it takes place outside too. So that's not even really what I'm saying either. You just would kind of you'll understand when you see it. And we do get this uh, really cool booklet. I'll show you this right here, guys, uh, with the making of Bruiser. the The face mask is creepier the more you look at it when he's, you know, getting revenge on people that wronged him. And uh, let me make sure there's no porn in here. Uh, this is his crazy wife in the movie. That just screams 1999 right there, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, really great pictures in here. Uh, really great write-ups in here. I love the booklets. The booklets are always great, especially when it's about a movie that I've seen before. So as I'm watching it and enjoying it, I can kind of sift through this. So very high-quality book. Very, very nice. It's just a really cool movie, guys. I'm not saying it's the best thing you're ever going to see, but when it comes to George's catalog, I genuinely think that people that go to this one will actually say I get what you mean like it's not a it's not a great George Merrill film but it's a good one and honestly I think I would go to this one over some of his early 70s stuff and for that and to that I, I agree so I, I like this movie I like this release 
Um, and like I said, this is an indicator title. I don't know how they operate, which is why I want to talk to you about this release and make sure I get this out as quick as I can. Um, the transfer for this, by the way, was done by Studio Canal. So that's why, I mean, I was, I was super impressed, especially when I watched... It might have been on Tubi I watched this, and it looked abysmally bad. So watching this was definitely an amazing experience. It looked great. It looks like a good 4K. I've seen better 4K restorations, but the fact of the matter is this was in 2000, you know, that sort of thing. But don't be alarmed. It looks really, really good. So very, very cool. And um, I just like this release. I'm happy to have this. I'm happy to own Bruiser. This is the only way I own this movie, and it's the only way I need to own this movie. So with that being said, guys... If you're interested in Bruiser, I, I really say hasten to look into this one. I don't want people to miss out that may see this too late and that sort of thing. Um, it's just, it's a George film. Guys, this is my favorite director, and I know it's he's a, a lot of y'all's favorite directors, and if not your favorite, you're a big fan of him. So with that being said, guys, check this out. Bruiser from George Romero, the great George Romero from Indicator on 4K UHD. There's 5,000 of these, and remember, there's a probably about 2,000 to 2,500 of the Blu-ray version of this, which will still have the 4K scan of everything with this that Studio Canal did. So thank you guys for watching this. Please let me know your thoughts on Bruiser, and if you've seen this movie, virtual high five. Talk to you guys soon, and I'll see y'all later. Huge giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind the scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.